Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. I think it's high time to also talk a little bit about authentication in the new Blazor in .NET 8, what I usually call Blazor SSR. And therefore in this video we'll look into how authentication works in this new Blazor SSR by investigating the Blazor template that includes authentication with individual user account. So let's go to the program.cs file and understand how things are set up here. What we can see from this template is that we are using actually SQLite as a database and therefore we also have an application DB context so the template comes really with everything that you need to get started with authentication in Blazor. And here we can already see the first change that is totally different from how it was set up in Blazor in the previous versions because you see that the first thing that we see here is this builder services add cascading authentication. And if you can recall previously or in previous versions of Blazor, where we had our routes, we needed to wrap everything in this cascading authentication component. However, this is not needed anymore in this new Blazor version since, since this is covered by what we have here, this service add cascading authentication state. Then we see some other services that are added to the DI container and these are custom services that are defined in this project and I will talk about them just in a few seconds. The last thing that we can see in this setup here is that we need to add authentication and for the authentication options we need to add the default scheme which would be an application scheme and if we hover the mouse over it we can see that this string is actually a constant and if we go to it we see that it has this identity prefix and then plus application. And we also have here this default sign-in scheme and we, if we hover our mouse on this we see that used as a default scheme by signing async HTTP context. So this is the default scheme that should be used. And here in this case, we see that this is an external scheme and it's also a constant, which is the identity prefix and external. So essentially we use two different schemes depending whether we want to authenticate the user using our own system or if we want to use some external logins. And last but not least, you also need to add the identity cookies because authentication is done based on setting an authentication cookie. However, I would like right now to scroll a little bit more down to the middleware section. And here we can see that we don't have those middleware like use authentication and use authorization. And this is very important. So usually we would be accustomed to have something like this, like use authentication and use authorization. However, in Blazor, we don't need to provide them explicitly if we use this use anti-forgery. Now use anti-forgery as the name imply adds anti-forgery middleware to the pipeline so it allows you to kind of like easily have secure forms by using also anti-forgery tokens. However, I have found out the hard way that if you use anti-forgery and then you also use authentication and use authorization, things will simply start to not work anymore. So let's now delete this middleware because as said we don't need that. Now let's move one step forward and understand exactly what services do we have here from the identity perspective, from authentication perspective and what they are doing. So first we have this identity components endpoint route builder extension. And if you take a look at this, these are actually minimal API routes that are created for different purposes. Now mainly I would say that they are used if you use external authentication providers. Because for instance, here we have this perform external login. So here would be the challenge if we want to perform a login with an external provider. And here we need to set up different things. But as said, there will be a dedicated video about this and we'll talk plenty about this endpoint and how this is used and when it is hit and what everything here actually does. But then we have this map post for the logout. And this is used basically when you are logging as user, when you click the logout button, then you simply just want to be logged out of the application. And the way that is set up in Blazor right now, it's simply making a call to this endpoint that is registered here. And then we have here the sign in manager and sign out async. Then we have another route group for the manage part. And here this map post to link external logins is actually one of the endpoints that is used when we want to perform authentication with an external login. And once again, we'll talk plenty about that in an upcoming video. And here we have another map post for download personal data that kind of like implements the logic for downloading personal data. Now this topic is right now out of the scope for this video, but I just wanted to show you and briefly explain what this identity components endpoint route builder extension class is for and how it's actually used. And then we have this identity no op email sender, which is essentially basically implementing this iEmail sender interface. This interface in our case, if we take a look at that, 
implement some basic methods that are commonly used for sending emails for authentication purposes. Right now it has kind of like a default implementation, but if you want to wire this up with your own email sending mechanism, then you just need to implement the interface and implement these necessary methods and define exactly how you would send emails. However, the way that the template is set up right now is just using this, let's say, fake implementation that is in this identity no op email sender class. Then we have this identity redirect manager class that kind of like is responsible for doing a bunch of different redirects. So I would see this very simple as a utility service that is called in different parts of our components that allow us to perform authentication and different tasks around authentication and the different ways that we might want to redirect. So redirect then with a message, redirect to a URL with certain information, redirect also with the, with the HTTP context. So there are different things or different ways that we can possibly do redirects. And all these ways in which we can do redirect instead of having them split it around different parts of the code base, they are part of this identity redirect manager. The next service, this identity revalidating authentication state provider service is actually a vital one that is very, very important. And the common idea for this revalidation authentication state in Blazor is very simple and hasn't really changed from the previous versions of the Blazor engine. The core concept of authentication state provider is that we need a mechanism to check if the user is still authenticated or not. Because you could have, for instance, a user that has two browser tabs open, for instance, and that user logs out from one tab but doesn't log out from the second one. And then if the user goes to the second tab, he should also be logged out there. So to achieve this, we need a way to kind of like check in a regular time interval, for instance, or whenever we check the authentication state of the user, if that user is still logged in or not. And the way that this is implemented is very simple. We have here a time span, and this is the revalidation interval. So it means that by default, if nothing happens, a revalidation will be done in this case each 30 minutes. Now, the way this validation is done is actually very simple, and it uses the user manager. So first, we use the user manager to actually get the user. And then obviously, if the user is null, then we return false, that, because it means that we don't really have that user in our database. So obviously, the user is not authenticated. Now, the second if here, this else if, kind of like checks if supports user security stamp. Now, this is a feature that if you use ASP.NET Core Identity, by default, it is supported. So it will use a security timestamp. And based on a comparison of the security timestamps, it is able to validate if a user is still authenticated or not. Now, if this is not enabled, so you can disable it explicitly, then we just return true because we don't know exactly how we need to validate this authentication. But if the user is there, then we can assume that it is true. Obviously, if you want to implement your own logic here, you can do it really the way you want. You have access to your database, you have access to your user manager, to your sign-in manager, you have even access to any type of information, really. So you can do whatever type of logic you would like to do. However, in our case, in this else, what we do here is we get the principal timestamp from the logged in user, and then we get the user timestamp that we have saved in the database. And then the only thing that's done here is simply a comparison. So if these two different stamps match, match then it means that the user is still authenticated. If those stamps don't match, then it means that the user has logged out in the meantime, and then therefore this will return false. And as this will return false, the entire application will notice, hey, the user has logged out and will behave accordingly. Last but not least, we have this identity user accessor. And that's really a very, very simple service that just retrieves the user or that just retrieves a user based on a user principle that we get here or a claims principle to be more technically precise. Now, the common task that we might want to do with authentication is usually register users. And for this, we have this register component. And please note one important thing here. Everything, really everything in this Blazor, since it's fully SSR, is based on Razor components. So we don't need to have CSHTML files anymore because here we can rely on the HTTP context to generate some correct and appropriate data that we can use in our components to actually make important decisions like registering or authenticating users. Now, this is a very simple form and we will see exactly how this looks in practice just in a few minutes, where we will provide some information about the user, like the email, the password, the confirm password, and so on. Now, the idea is that we have this task register user, 
where actually everything happens. And we, if we take a look step by step at what we do here is we use regular ASP.NET Core Identity Services to actually create this new user and register it. So first of all, we use the user store to set the username. Then we get an email store to store the email and we use this set email and then user input email and here we provide cancellation token none. And once we have those two, we can simply use the user manager to create this user, providing also the password that the user provided in the form. Obviously, if we have errors, then we add the errors to the model and we just return. Now, the logic that is implemented by default here is that the next step after you do the registration, you need to also confirm your email. So in this case, the implementation starting here from line 83 is regarding this specific task. So first of all, you would want to get once again the user by ID because right now you also have an identifier. And here you use the user manager to generate, to generate an email confirmation token. Now that token is then obviously encoded. We then provide or create a callback URL. And last but not least, we use the email sender. You know, remember the, 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 the email sender implementation that I have showed just a little bit earlier. And here we have this send confirmation link async and it should actually send the email. And if the email confirmation is required, that's another setting that we can perform or that we can set when we add authentication in program.cs, we then can say that, okay, then redirect the user to this account register confirmation. And this would take the user to the page where they should register their account. Now we will see exactly this fake implementation of the service. We don't receive really an email, but instead we get the link from the email basically displayed in our browser and we can click on that to verify our email address. And that's really everything that we have in this register Razor component or Blazor component. So let's move now to the login. And here we have just a very simple login form, obviously. And in this login form, we see that we get some parameters here. We get the HTTP contents because we need this information. From the form, we get as form parameter inputs this input model that we have. And from the query, we get the return URL. In the uninitialize, there is this very simple if, and it checks that if you hit the login and if there is already an authentication cookie, that cookie should be actually removed. And that's, for, that's why it performs here just a sign out. So the cookie will be removed. And the login user method is actually the method that gets it when you hit the login button and it simply does validate your credentials. So it uses the sign-in manager and the password sign-in async that would essentially verify if that combination of the email and the password exists already in your database. Here we have some other decisions that we could possibly make, but if everything is okay, we just log the information that the user login and we redirect to the return URL. So let's now run the application and see exactly how this looks in practice. So you see, we have here this hello world with this counter, click me, we can click the counter, but if we go on out required, we are actually redirect to login. And I will talk about this redirect to login just in a few minutes from now. So obviously right now I don't have any user here, so I would like to have a user. So let's add this one. Let's add also a password, but I think I need to add a more complex one, simply like this. Also confirm the password and then click register. Here we can see that we have this register confirmation and obviously here I didn't receive an email, but I have this click here to confirm your account. And this is contains the token that was generated for the email confirmation. But instead of receiving it in an email, I just got displayed it here in my web application. So if I click on that, we see that thank you for confirming your email. So it means that I am a confirmed user. So right now, if I go to this login, I can use my email, I can use my password, also hit the remember me and then click login. And you see that right now I am logged in. Let's now log out from this application and then close the browser. The next very important topic I would like to talk about because it's really a very, very common practice that we want to achieve in our web applications in a lot of different circumstances is that if a user is not signed in, we should automatically redirect the user to the login page. And as you have seen just previously, when I run the application, if I'm not logged in, I can still go to all the other components like the weather forecast, the counter and so on and so forth. So I want to prevent this. Implementing this idea of redirecting to login is actually very, very simple here in this Blazor on .NET 8, but it is different than it was before in Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor Server. And the proper way to achieve this, we already have in this template that contains the authentication part. So let's take a look a little bit here in this manage folder. 
And in this manage folder, you see that we have this imports.razor. And in this imports.razor, which is then kind of like applied to everything that is contained in this folder, in the manage folder, and if you have subfolder, it would apply to the subfolders too. And here we have this attribute and Microsoft ASP.NET Core authorization authorized. Theoretically, if you want to achieve this redirect login, if you take this attribute, this authorized attribute, and move it into the, let's call it the global imports.razor, which is here, and we can go here and add it here at the end. However, right now, if we would run the application, we would get some errors because as we have implemented this redirect to login globally, so for the entire application, when you try to access really any URL, we will be redirected to login. But when we try to access the login, we will be once again redirected to login, so it will be a continuous loop. That's why what we need to do is come back here to this login, and for this login component, we want to specify the attribute allow anonymous. And this will make sure that requests that are anonymous are able to actually display this login page. So now if we run the application, you can see that I was automatically redirected to login. And if I click on home, I'm redirected to login. If I click on counter, I'm still redirected to login. Obviously, in practice, we would also want to allow anonymous also on the register, because right now when we click on register, we are also redirected to the login, obviously, and we wouldn't be able to login if we don't have a user already. Last but not least, I would like to show you this authentication revalidation in action. So the only thing that I will do here, I will change this to be not 30 minutes, but to be only just one minute. So here I have the application and I will use my email address to log in. Now let me go to another browser window and I will just also do this exact same thing. Obviously in this case, I am already authenticated because I already have an authentication cookie for this website. Now let me go here on this first browser and let me then here click on log out. And then I will go automatically to the second one and I will just wait here for one minute. It could be that it's less than one minute because it kind of like depends when the last time the revalidation was done. Now the thing is that you won't be automatically logged out because this browser or this window is kind of like static so nothing happened with the server anymore. But for instance if I want to click on counter here you see that I was redirected to login. So because I logged out from this browser window, now here in this other browser window, when I wanted to navigate to any custom component, the revalidation was actually done in the background and the moment I wanted to navigate, it recognized that I am not authenticated anymore and therefore I was redirected to login. Bottom line is that right now we have a very good and common understanding about how authentication works and how the authentication is designed in this new Blazor in .NET 8. And that's a solid foundation for us to maybe go and investigate further in other videos how we can authenticate, for instance, with external providers and how we can implement those authorization, how we can work with policies. But I just wanted to have this common ground defined previously. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like it. You will help us to make it easier to discover for others that might find it useful as well. And if you are for the first time on the channel, smash the subscribe button so that you don't miss anything new that will come up on this channel. If you have any question or if you have any idea or suggestions, please don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave your comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.